darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see in your work, even when I don't feel in your work, Never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. And friends of Northgate, so glad once again that you're able to join us on this Wednesday evening. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 7. I'll just tell you right now, we're only going to go through half the chapter because just, there's just a lot here to digest. And uh, we'll pick up the second half of the chapter next week. So we'll be, we'll be uh, going through verse up to vo verse 14. So if you have your Bibles, take, take and turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 7. And let's read verses 1 through 10 to begin with. It says, This Melchizedek, and I told you we'd be talking about Melchizedek tonight, was king of the city of Salem and also priest of God, <coughs> uh, of the God Most High. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, uh, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Then Abraham took a tenth of all that he had captured in battle and gave it to Melchizedek. The name Melchizedek means king of justice, and king of Salem means king of and, and Salem means king of priests. There is no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end to his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God which is Jesus, of course. Consider then how great Melchizedek was. 
Even Abraham, the great patriarch of Israel, recognized this by giving him a tenth of what he had taken in battle. Now the law of Moses required that the priests who were descendants of Levi must collect a tithe from the rest of the people of Israel, who are also descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, who was not a descendant of Levi, collected all collected a tenth from Abraham, and Melchizedek placed a blessing upon Abraham, the one who had already received the promises of God. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. The priests also collected tithes, uh, all also collect tithes are men who die, who have died. So Melchizedek is greater than they are because we are told that he lives on. Uh, in addition, we might even say that these Levites, the ones who collect the tithe, paid a tithe to Melchizedek when their ancestor Abraham paid a tithe to them. For although for although Levi wasn't born yet, the seed from which he came was in Abraham's body when Melchizedek collected a tithe from him. Interesting, interesting scripture. Uh, if you're taking notes, uh, number one would be Jesus is superior to Melchizedek. He's also superior to Abraham, and we'll, and we'll see that here. So who was Melchizedek? Well, this verse 1 tells us that he was king of the city of Salem, and he was also a priest. He was king, and he was a priest. Now, the Jews in whom we are, uh, the Hebrews in whom we are talking about here in, in, in this book of Hebrews, that was a little foreign to them because... Uh, you know, you were you, you, if you were a king, you were you weren't you weren't necessarily a priest. Now, many many scholars feel that Salem was was short for um, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So, in those days, though, it was not unusual for a king to be both king and priest. Now, this was this was before Abraham. This was before. Um, the tribe of Levi, who were all priests, but at that particular time, it was not unusual for them, for a king to be a priest also. But according to the Jews, a king could never be a priest. Now, the in the Old Testament, it speaks of their Messiah who was to come, and he would be. We're talking about Jesus now. He, it, the Old Testament says that he would be both king and priest. So you see the difference there. In Genesis chapter 14, it talks about how five kings came to attack the kings of the land. And they captured many of the people uh, and they took their goods. Now, among them, among those who were captured and taken was, Abra was uh, the, the, the nephew of Abraham and his name was Lot. Abraham went, Abraham went after those five kings that attacked and he defeated them and he brought back the goods that were taken uh, from, from, from Lot and his family and, and the kings that, that, uh, Lot was, uh, be, that Lot would be with. That is when Melchizedek went out and he met Abraham and he brought bread and he brought wine to, uh, to Abraham. Now, this is when uh, he blessed Abraham. Melchizedek blessed Abraham in the name of the Most High God. Now, in verse 2, this was when Melchizedek, uh, this is when Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth, a tithe of all that he had captured during the war. He gave it to this king Melchiz Melchizedek, this priest Melchizedek. And uh, the name Melchizedek itself, that name means uh, king of justice. Uh, in other words, he was the king of what was right. Salem means king of peace, king of peace. So this man, Melchizedek, uh, was the king of what was right and the king of peace. In this, he was, in, in this, he was a picture of the Messiah. 
He was a picture of Jesus, the Christ, of whom the Jews were all waiting for anyway. They were believing that he was coming. Now, little did they understand, most of them, that he already came and he died. And he be, has become our high priest. And this is what the writer of Hebrews keeps pointing towards. Verse 3, the Bible doesn't tell us anything about the family of Melchizedek. There's no mention of a father, no mention of a mother. Uh, it was as if he had no parents. Now the Jews, to the Jews, this meant that he had no beginning. Usually there was a record of who he came from, like Jesus, son of Mary and Joseph, uh, or Peter, uh, uh, Bar uh, Barjona was, was, was the father's name. And, uh, and so I think that was right, Barjona, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, they would, get, they would give names of people like Peter and, and Paul and, and even Jesus, but they would also put the name of their parents. Well, that, that was never said about Melchizedek. There was also no record of his death. And they uh, took this to mean that he never died, that he never died. To them, Melchizedek was a priest even before time began. And uh, he would be a priest without end. That's what they would call him. Now, the priest of the Jews had to come, and we mentioned this a few, few weeks ago, the priest of the Jews had to come uh, from the tribe of Levi, okay? But Melchizedek was a priest, it says, of, of a different kind, a, a time that was for all times, that, that because he had no beginning and he had no ending as far as the Jews were concerned. Jesus is a priest like this. And that's why when they say uh, that Jesus was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, uh, Jesus was a priest like this. All the other priests had records of beginning and ending. Now, we know that Jesus was born, but Jesus, Jesus before he came in an earthly, in an earthly body, he was, he was with God at the, at the beginning whenever that was. Jesus has no end. His kingdom, it says, has no end. And so in, in the same way, they considered Melchizedek uh, a, a, a priest and, uh, uh, and Jesus was a, was a priest like Melchizedek. And, uh, and after they died, um, uh, uh, they were never thought of, and I'm talking about regular priests here, uh, the priests of Levi, they were never thought of as a priest forever like Melchizedek was. Now in verse 4, we see that Melchizedek accepted the tithe that was given to Abraham. This is actually the first uh, mention of tithing in, in the Bible. And this was back in the 14th chapter of Genesis. It was a custom to give to the gods uh, of, of what, was, what was taken in war. So Abraham was just performing a normal custom of the people. It was a way of giving thanks for their help, for God's help in battle, and for the help of the priests. The priests who would receive the gift would be considered more important than the one who gave it. And so there was some admiration. There was some uh, adoration for this, this high priest. So here Abraham gave the best part to Melchizedek as the priest, he says, of the Most High God. Melchizedek, he accepted these gifts. And that's where it shows that he was more important than even Abraham. In verse 5, Jacob, who was a descendant of Abraham, one of Abraham's uh, children, Jacob himself had 12 sons, and one of them was Levi. And from the tribe of Levi, God chose the sons of Aaron. Aaron was from the tribe of Levi. God chose the sons of Aaron, along with Aaron, to be priests in Israel. No one else. If you weren't from the tribe of Israel, I mean from the tribe of uh, uh, Levi, uh, you could never consider yourself to become a priest. And by all Jewish laws, Israel had to give a tenth of all they had. They had to give it to God. Now, it was the sons of Levi, the Bible tells us in verse 5, 
that collected all of these tithes. And um, in verses 6 and 7, it says, But Melchizedek, who was not a part of the tribe of Levi, still received the tithe from Abraham. So we can see Melchizedek was a different kind of priest. There are some people who think that, that Melchizedek, and I'll just throw this in here, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, but many people think Melchizedek was, and we know he's a type of Christ, but there are some who've, who have actually heard them that they really believe it was Christ incarnate. In other words, he came early and he was a priest to Salem. The Bible doesn't really say that. It says that he was, that, that Melchizedek was a, was a priest and and he, and he was the, the, the leader of Salem, a king of Salem. Now, no doubt Abraham was a great man, okay? God called him. God led him. God promised Abraham that he would make him great. And the Israelites, uh, according to that promise, and, and this is what happened, the Israelites became a blessing, the Bible says, to many nations, and it's true that the one who blesses is greater than the one who's being blessed. This is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to say to us. Melchizedek, he blessed Abraham in the name of the Most High God. So he must have been greater than Abraham. Verse 8. Verse 8 reminds us that Abraham and the priests came after him and those who and, and all the priests that came after Abraham and the priests were only mere were merely men. They were merely men. And because there was no record of Melchizedek's death, many of the Jews took this to mean that he was still a priest that was alive. That he was out there somewhere still. I don't know if they meant in spirit, I don't know if they meant in physical body. It's a, it's a little bit of a mystery, but this is, how the, this is how the Hebrews were thinking at that particular time. And the writer of Hebrews is using Melchizedek as a, uh, as a reference to how great Christ is. Everything that the writer of Hebrews is talking about when he talks about Melchizedek is to point us to a greater priest even, even, even as the Jews so honored Melchizedek as a priest that would last forever, Jesus is even greater than that. And that's what the writer of Hebrews is trying to get across to us. I want to read to you uh, verses 9 and 10 again, but I want to read to you from the Message Bible. To me, it really said it pretty good. He said, or look at it this way. We pay our tithes to priests who die, but Abraham pay, paid tithes to a priest who the scripture says lives. Ultimately, you could even say that since Levi descended from Abraham, who paid tithes to Melchizedek, when we pay tithes to the priestly tribe of Levi, they end up with Melchizedek. This is how much they honored the, the, um, the memory of Melchizedek. They think there was no priest that was, that was any greater. And so this is, this is just another thing where, as the writer of Hebrews is talking to the Hebrew people, this is just another thing because they had all these heroes and they had all these people. We're going to get into the heroes, heroes of faith as we continue on in Hebrews here in, verses, in chapters 11 and 12. But they had all of, they had all of these Hebrews, people that, uh, heroes rather, the people that they looked up to so much. And it was, there was a tendency to look to them and not look to Christ, who is the ultimate high priest. And so the writer is, is trying to make a correlation here that Jesus is even greater than Melchizedek. Um, it's, again, it shows that, uh, as I said, he, he's greater than not only Melchizedek, but he's also, Jesus is also greater than all the priests of Levi, all the priests that came from Aaron. Uh, he is greater than any priest that the Jews ever, ever had. So the writer is saying that uh, everything points to the greatness of Christ, our high priest. And this is the message that he's trying to get across. Secondly, if you're taking notes, king and priest, verses uh, 11 through 14. Let's take a look at that. So if the priesthood of Levi, on which the law was based, 
could have achieved the perfection God intended, why did God need to establish a different priesthood with a priest in the order of Melchizedek instead of the order of Levi and Aaron? And if the priesthood is changed, the law must also be changed to permit it. For the priests, uh, uh, for the priests we are talking about uh, belongs to a different tribe. Those members have never served at the altar as priests. What I mean is, our Lord came from the tribe of Judah, and Moses never mentioned priests coming from the tribe of Judah. Verse 11, we know that God gave the people the law, and uh, the law that was first given to Moses, and he made Aaron the very first high priest. The purpose of the priest was to link men and women to God. This is why they offered sacrifices to God. The men and the women, the families, they would bring their sacrifices to the temple. A priest would take the sacrifice. Uh, he, would, he would kill the lamb or whatever it was that they were sacrificing, uh, pour the blood into a basin, take it into the Holy of Holies, and pour it on the altar there. The purpose of the priest was to link man and men and women to God. And so they would, on the behalf of the people, offer sacrifices. Now, the reality is, and the reality was, that no person, this is what, this is what verse 11 was saying here, that no person is perfect and without sin in the sight of God. And this included the priests of the family of Levi. They were not good enough. Because of their sins, they were not good enough. But God said that there would be a new king, there would be a new priest, one like Melchizedek. One like Melchizedek. One that they honored and revered so much. There would have been no need for a different kind or a type of priest uh, if, if the family of Levi were perfect. That's what it says in verse 11. If the family of Levi were perfect, there would never be a need for another priest or another high priest. Verse 12, the writer here, he's reminding us that there is now a change in the priesthood. There's a change in the priesthood. This change would bring about a radical new kind of law. Also, there would be no way of the, for them to understand this new way in terms of the old law. The old law showed us uh, our need for a new priest, a new savior, a new king. Jesus is not only priest, but he's priest, priest and king. And so this would be different, like after the order of Melchizedek. In verses 13 and 14, the, the writer reminds us that, that Jesus came not from the tribe of Levi, but he came from the tribe of Judah. He's the lion, the, the scripture says, of the tribe of Judah and, um, and not from the family of Levi. Uh, in, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, the, the, the prophet said, But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village, among all the other people of where? Judah. You, yet, yet a ruler will come from you. So this is the prophecy of Jesus. Let me read that again. He says, but you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler would come from you. Yet a king would come from you. Yet a priest would come from you. I just added that in there, but I think that's what they're referring to, especially the king part. The prophet said in Isaiah 16, 5, that the Messiah was to come from the family of David. It says that he is King David's greater son. Another prophecy of Jesus becoming king. See, the Jews knew that the Messiah would be both king and priest. They really did know that. But because of tradition and because of the law, this was going to be a hard pill 
for the, for the Jewish people to swallow. A priest, not from the tribe of Levi. It just, it wasn't making a whole lot of sense to them. So the priesthood here was about to change. Jesus would become both king and priest. And, and there's no one greater that was before him. Not Melchizedek, not Abraham, not anyone from the tribe of Levi, not any of the priests was ever going to be greater than Jesus. There would be a, a change that would come. And I know people have a hard time. We all have a hard time with change sometimes. But this was a change that was necessary for, human, for humankind, for, for humanity. That Jesus would come and be the ultimate supreme sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. No longer, and I've mentioned it before, no longer would they have to carry basins of blood into the Holy of Holies and sacrifice. Sacrifice for, for our sins. We do that by receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. And because of, because of that, He has become our priest and our King. So oh, I thank God. King Jesus, it just sounds good. It just sounds so good. He's the one who took my sins. He, he, the, Bible, the Bible says that, that He goes to the Father in our, in our behalf. He does that now. It says that we can come boldly before the throne of God and seek His face and trust Him with our lives. So if, he, if you're struggling today, let Jesus be both your priest, one who would go to God in your behalf. If you have sin, confess your sin to the Lord. Jesus will take your sins to God. You will be forgiven according to the Word of God. And remember that He is not only our priest, but He's also our King forever. Amen? Well, God bless you. Have a great night. We'll tackle the rest of this chapter next week. And um, just, for, just a reminder on Sunday, uh, many have been asking, uh, because it's Super Bowl Sunday, we've kind of had a tradition for the last three or four years that uh, just wear your favorite team jersey. I will. And wear your favorite team jersey on Sunday. And we'll all have a we'll all have have a great time in worship, hearing the word of God. We are those of you who are staying home and watching us on Facebook. We invite you to uh, have communion prepared, and uh, we are going to be receiving communion on Sunday. We love you. God bless you. Have a great night. And Jesus is both priest and king. Amen. God bless you.